Hi, I'm Scott from Book Axe, and today I'm going to review the final two books from my half of the Women's Prize long list. Praise Song for the Butterflies by Bernice McFadden and Lost Children Archive by Valeria Lisselli. Over the past week or so, I, I've read the, my final two books on my half of the Women's Prize long list. Um, and I'm here to, to do reviews of them. So, so the first one, and one that I actually spoiled spoil my own review here, really enjoyed, was Praise Song for the Butterflies by Bernice McFadden. So, so this book follows the main protagonist, Abeo Kata, who lives in West Africa, and she's at the beginning of the story, she's nine years old, and she's part of a, a well-to-do family, and her a, a father works for, for, for the government. But bad times before the family, and it's no spoiler because it's written on the inside of the sleeve, um, to, to, to overcome those bad times, her, her father, um, at the behest of his mother, grants um, Abio to, to a local religious shrine as, as a gift, an offering, to turn, turn around the fortunes of, of, of her family. Um, which, whilst I still struggle to get why anyone would ever do that, it clearly is actually a thing. And actually, since, since reading the book, I've Googled quite a bit about the term, it's, it's trochosi, which is, th this is a legit thing. And this is part of the reason why I actually found this book so, so in a way, chilling, but also really, really good read, was I didn't know anything about this. And it's very enlightening in, in the fact that this offering of children to shrines, um, essentially selling them into to, to a kind of slavery, still goes on to this day. So, so for that alone, the, this book was 100% worth, worth my time reading it and, and really did enlighten me. But, but more than that, what I found about this story was it, it's short, but it's got a very good plot. Um, it, it educates you a lot, as I, I've, I've already said. But the prose, and, and sometimes with some, some of the books on, on these literary prize long lists, I, I sometimes struggle a bit with some of the prose, but the prose here is actually fairly easy to read. It's a very difficult subject, but, but, but easy to read. And the, the other main benefit to me is I, I completely was rooting for the main central character, so fully was, be, was behind her um, the whole way. So, so in terms of the benefits, without going into too much detail and, and spoiling the book, I, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I about I'd say ninety five percent of the way through, I was like, "Wow, this book is going to be really great. It's going to be really tough to beat." And then there's one thing that let it down for me, and that's a a chance meeting at the end, which then solved all all plot issues and everything like that. It fell nicely into place after one coincidence, and I just was there. I I I can't remember the phrase, but I think there's something around you can have coincidences at the beginning of a story to start it off, but you can't have them to tidy up the story at the end. Um, and that does it, which I think, bear in mind, it's a literary prize. It, it may may hold it back in the later rounds, but but for me, I thoroughly enjoyed this story, um, and yeah, wouldn't recommend couldn't couldn't recommend it anymore. And and the final book on the long list that I read was Lost Children Archive by Valeria Lucelli, and this is a story around based around a family, um, two adults surprisingly, and two children. Both both children are sort of the the step brother and sister, um, the daughter belongs to the mother and the boy belongs to, to the father. And we actually never find out their names. It's, it's a trend that I've seen in, it's definitely something Milkman does as well, um, one of the other books on the long list and the, the Man Book Prize or whatever, where they don't name the characters, which is uh, sometimes a little, a little odd. And I did find it a bit strange in this book. But, but it's based around a family who go on a road trip. And this road trip really has two, two purposes and two very different ones for each, for each main character. So for the father, it's a journey to a voyage of discovery to document the lives and the regions where Apaches first lived, to just almost a voyage of self-discovery, for, for want of a better phrase or the way I'm seeing it. And for the mother, it's actually on a journey down towards the border, just, just happened to be going that way. She, she got involved in the plight of two, two children who were based, or were originally from Central America, who were trying to be smuggled across the border to, to come up and meet their mother who was based in New York. But they get detained at the border and sort of the legal ramifications of that of them potentially being deported or whether they actually get to, to go through to see their mother. So, so so that's the part of the journey. And on this journey, they take their kids with them. And it's sort of, it's, it's a story that really follows the, the lives and really looks at the relationship both between the two parents, 
the, the impact that their relationship has on, on the two stepchildren. But also, as I, said, I, I think it is just more of a voyage of self-discovery. Um, borderline, I, I wouldn't say midlife crisis, but it is this whole journey of using very topical themes and obviously the whole sort of children being detained at borders is very topical at, the, at this moment in time. Um, so, so it's trying to cram all of these things in. For me, it didn't quite work. I think that could potentially be a, a lot to do with my taste in books. The, the plot is quite very slow moving. A lot of the pro prose is very meandering and it goes off on massive tangents. And I just, I just couldn't buy in or like really either of the characters, which it, as with all things in, in um, books, <laughs> Down to personal taste. Um, I, I just didn't really see anything in common, especially with the father. I just I just couldn't buy anyone going on this journey that he's uprooted his family to go on to to go and document and record sounds of of this journey into sort of down into Arizona. So I just didn't buy it. It was long. The 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 one thing actually that did take me surprise is partway through the book there's a change of perspective and actually the plot goes on whilst it's still quite slow. It does take a, a massive detour off on a tangent. Which I didn't see coming, although actually for the first 150 odd pages I did wonder where this book was going because it didn't seem to be going anywhere very quickly. Um, so, in summary, it wasn't really one for me. Could I see it doing well? Well, I think actually in a week or so's time we're going to do a short list prediction video and I'll, I'm sure I'll rank it there. But um, it just really just wasn't one for me. So, that's the final book I read of the Women's Prize. Um, I hope you've had a good week of reading. Please do subscribe to our channel if you want to catch up on Lucy's reviews of the, the Women's Prize and any all, all sorts of bookish chats that we've got going on. Um, have a good week. Bye.